On One released the latest version of their No Noise AI software earlier this week, and I've spent much of the time since release testing every possible aspect. I'm Austin James Jackson, a landscape photographer based in Utah, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the new on one no noise AI 2024 let you know my thoughts on if the software is worth it or not. Now, additionally, I'll be showing you guys some examples of how it works, even comparing it with some of the other industry leaders in noise reduction, such as Topaz, Photo AI, and even Lightroom's denoising feature. In the past, I've been increasingly tough on my assessment of On1's denoising software. I've made numerous videos comparing different denoising softwares, and On1 has always been a major underachiever in my opinion. When I heard about the 2024 edition of No Noise and it being slightly revamped with new processing power, I was honestly pretty skeptical that it would be good. And after trying it out, I can say that I think the new software is good, but it's not really great. Let's dive in and let me explain exactly why I feel that way. So this new software, when you open it, looks like this. Yes, you can use it as a plugin, so it'll work with like Lightroom or any other editor you're using. You can open it directly into On One No Noise AI 2024. Uh, I've got a few photo examples already here. The first one um, I will probably show you is this photo. Um, and there's a few things that I do and I don't like about this. So you can use No Noise and Tack Sharp AI combined, which is really nice. You can hit both and it'll allow you to both denoise and sharpen. So if your image is under sharpened, you can adjust that here. Now, when you scroll down, uh, it is nice because the settings are very, very easy to use. Uh, it's not like some of the denoising softwares where you have basically have to have a PhD in denoising in order to get good results. This one is very easy to use. So you've got your luminance, your enhanced detail, and your color is what you have for noise reduction. Luminance is going to affect the amount of noise reduction. Enhanced detail is just going to enhance some of those details um, that you may have lost because of noise. And then color is going to remove the color noise. So if it detects that there's color noise in your image, which you'll notice in a lot of really high ISO images that you'll have like a weird color cast, this will remove a little bit of that color, which is nice. Generally, I'm leaving the color all the way at 100 and the luminance um, is usually at 100, unfortunately. I'll show you why I don't like that in just a second. Enhanced detail, usually around 10 or so, is a good place to be. Now, the main problem, um, and of course, before we get into this, I guess you can just slide this bar right here, which allows you to see the before and after. So right now it looks good. I mean, it's removing a lot of noise, yes. But it's giving my image kind of a plasticky feel. I'll zoom in one more time so you can see. Everything feels very AI-like, and I want it to still feel somewhat like a photograph. Now the problem, and what I don't like about On One here, you reduce the luminance, you'll notice if I go 60 luminance, what I guess I would like that to do is just like 60% opacity, basically, like you're using Photoshop and adjusting the opacity slider. Instead, it more targets like 60% of the noise almost, it's really, Hard to explain, but you can see it looks terrible now because there's some spots that are denoised well and then other spots that didn't denoise at all. So it looks really uneven. So no matter what you set this value at, you're never going to get it to look really that great. I mean, you can even see when it's at 17, it does it removes a ton of noise here and no noise elsewhere. So you can't really drop that slider. You really are pretty much sold out at 100. Now this, I'm not gonna show you a thousand different photos, but I've tested this on probably 20-ish or 25 photos and everyone has had the same problem. You pretty much have to go 100 on the luminance or else it's just gonna look not very clean. So unfortunately, that's what you get. Now, if you're using this within On One, you can use their layer system, I guess, and you could lower the opacity, which would maybe help a little bit. Um, but at the same time, a lot of times this also introduces some artifacting, like you can see on my nose here, that little like halo there was not present before. So kind of makes things feel plasticky. I'm not like a huge crazy fan of it. Now, um, this can look good for some images. I'll show you some images in a second here that do actually look pretty good. Now, sharpening, uh, pretty straightforward. Tack Sharp AI D Blur. This is the amount of D Blur that it's gonna apply and the amount of micro sharpening. This image probably doesn't need sharpening, so I would probably just do no noise AI, but I wanted to show you that you can do the sharpening part if that is something your image is missing. So you can do all that. When you're done, you hit the screen checkbox, then it loads out, um, and then you're able to save the image wherever 
you wanted to. So because I loaded this in uh, just as a standalone, it's just gonna allow me to save back to like my desktop. But if you were to have loaded it from Lightroom, you can save it right back in the Lightroom. So wherever you want it to go, you can save it there. Now I'll show you on a Milky Way photo here. We really only need no noise AI, so we'll just make sure that is checked. It does a decent job, um, all things considered. If you were just looking at this software, it would do a pretty good job. But when you compare it to a couple other softwares, which we're gonna do in just a couple minutes here, it is a little bit underachieving when it comes to um, the night photography aspect, I guess. I'll bring this bar back over here and zoom in. One thing on this photo that I noticed is it just adds this not super nice blotchiness around my mountain a little bit. It's not too bad, but you'll notice it more when I compare it. Um, the color noise it gets rid of is kind of nice, but it almost gets rid of too much, so you might want to drop it. Um, with the auto settings on, it wants to enhance 50 on the detail, which I'm actually fine with. You know, if it wants to go a little bit higher than I'm used to, that's fine as long as it looks good. So I'm just always sliding this bar and testing the settings. And it actually does a pretty good job on this uh, hut over here, or this uh, fire lookout tower is I guess technically what it is. But it's done pretty well. Um, and you can do a little bit of micro sharpening here, but you would probably just want to do both and do tack sharp AI rather than the micro sharpening. So I can drop that to zero. Again, you can save that and load that, but it does a decent job. Um, but I will compare this in just a second for you. I do wanna show you one more image that's not a landscape because I know there is some of you guys out there that aren't landscape photographers. So this image here is just like a photo of some food that I shot at an event. Um, and you can see the denoise has done quite a nice job. Uh, it's added a little bit of weird artifacting here and there. And again, we're gonna have the same issue on this image where you can't really lower the luminance, even though maybe you would think that that would maybe fix some stuff like this. But as you lower the luminance, it just starts to look splotchy in places. This photo is certainly not as bad, but like you'll still notice some splotchiness as you lower the luminance levels, which makes it really challenging to use because it's pretty much an all or nothing. Um, and you can go around and adjust these settings. You can see this image is a good, uh, visualization of that tack sharp going to work. You can see the sides of these little trays here. These like caterer trays sharpens off really nicely. So that is nice to have the two combined. Um, but again, it does add some artifacting like over here. Um, but most AI denoisers are going to do that. So you do just have to be aware that that is usually the case. Now I want to get to the comparison here because I do have four different comparison images to show you uh, and I've just loaded them into Photoshop so I can load them as layers and I've named the layers Lightroom, Topaz, and On1. So I've compared Lightroom's denoising option which was released like a year or two ago now that works pretty well and I've done Topaz as well, one of the industry leaders in uh, noise reduction and I've also done of course On1 at the bottom. So you'll be able to see how all three stack up together. This will hopefully help you to inform your purchase decision. Of course these are just four images that I tried you may have different results but I found these results to be pretty consistent across all images so on a photo like this daytime photo with some food Lightroom does a pretty nice job and we've got Topaz and we've got on one honestly Lightroom probably does the best job while Lightroom has the least sharp like food I guess and everything else it it, it gives it still looks like a photo whereas like Topaz and On One, both kind of, they add a lot of artifacting. They do remove a lot of noise, but there's a lot of artifacting. Um, and especially on this Topaz, you can see these like lines that it adds here just do not look good. So not really great. I would say On One is decent, but still I think On One is probably, or sorry, Lightroom rather, is probably the best in this case. But I mean, it is really close. If you already own Lightroom though, you might not want to buy another software. So Lightroom might just be able to do it for you. Let's look at a night photo. This one in particular was a really, really high ISO. I think I was at 20,000 or 25,000 ISO. So it's gonna be really, really noisy, which is why I wanted to run it through because those really high noise images are nice to look at. This one in particular, we're looking at right now the Lightroom results first, Topaz, and On One. Let's talk about the On One first. It does an absolutely awful job in the foreground. It is so splotchy. Um, it's just really, really not good here in the foreground. So for that reason, I mean, the sky is still also pretty splotchy. So just the whole thing is really high. ISO image is not good in On One. And Topaz, it does a little bit better job. The sky actually looks pretty decent. 
Um, the ground looks pretty good, but it's almost like too much clarity or something, but it looks decent. You can see around my tripod, there's some kind of weird artifacting and stuff, but um, otherwise it does a pretty good job. Lightroom, uh, foreground really soft, tripod looks a little bit better, but the stars just don't look good. So for those really, really high ISO images, I think Topaz probably takes the cake right here. Of course, this image that we looked at earlier, we will zoom in here. Right now you're looking at Lightroom. Now you're looking at Topaz. Now you're looking at On One. You can see once again, On One is just really splotchy on these night photos. I don't know what it is. It just creates weird splotches. So for that reason, it just doesn't look that great. Um, and it's definitely decent. I mean, it's workable, but it, it just the splotchiness is just not good. Uh, Topaz does a lot better job, in my opinion, here on the night photo. So I think that's looking pretty good. Lightroom, again, has the issue. I talked about this in a recent video where I compared Lightroom with some of the other softwares. It creates these weird, like, streaks in the sky that you won't see on Topaz. Like, it can't pick out the right objects to sharpen or something and it thinks things are stars and it makes your stars like fireflies almost like they're flying around so topaz i definitely think is the way to go for night photos um, and then we will look at this photo i only have on one and topaz on this one i just have the tiff file on this that's the one downside to lightroom is in lightroom you actually cannot denoise anything that's not a raw file so since this was a tiff i wasn't able to denoise it but let's zoom in and look at the topaz versus the on one right now you're looking at topaz now you're looking at on one. I think the Topaz is a little bit better because you can tone it down a little bit so it still looks like a photograph um, where you can see there's still a little bit of noise in the background. This on one, they got rid of all the noise, but it just looks so plasticky. And as I showed you in on one, as you lower that luminance slider, unfortunately, uh, it makes it even more splotchy. So it's like all or nothing. So for that reason, I think Topaz probably takes the cake on the comparison here. So after much testing, I think I've concluded that On One does pretty decently for daytime photos, um, but so does Lightroom. If you already own Lightroom, it's probably not worth purchasing On One, in my opinion. Um, but if you do own On One, the denoising is so much better than it was last year. So it's really nice because if you already own On One, you already have all that software. So I would go ahead and use that if you already own On One. When it comes to night photos, I think unfortunately On One just falls short because of the splotchiness. Um, so I think I would probably go with Topaz for those night photos. Um, and unfortunately just On One, that splotchiness really kills you. The fact that when you drop that luminance, it doesn't just lower the opacity, it lowers like I guess what kind of noise it removes. Uh, that really, really hurts the software. So unfortunately, that would be my recommendation. Use On One if you already have the software, you've got daytime photos. Otherwise, use Lightroom for your daytime photos. If you use Lightroom, probably don't purchase On One No Noise as a plugin. Um, and then for those night photos, I think Topaz still probably takes the cake. Like I said, just my opinion, you might have different results. I encourage you to download the trial, try it for yourself and see. Um, just to make sure because you may have a different results and I do those just my results. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you do decide that you want to purchase On One No Noise 2024, you can use the discount code Austin Jackson 20 in order to receive 20% off. This is a bigger discount than you would get uh, purchasing it with our launch special that's going on right now. If you guys have questions, feel free to let me know down below in the comments. I'll do my best to try and answer them and help you guys to make an informed purchase decision on whatever noise reduction software you want to get. Thank you guys so much again. We'll see you guys next time.